Hey everyone, Bradley Jack Design here with another design breakdown, this time my Devante Adams card design I created. A lot of people asked me to do a breakdown of this, so I'm going to show you what it took to create this design. Now this design is actually three different Photoshop files. It's the final design, I have a design with the card in the case itself, and then I have the card design as it is. So we're going to start there with the card design. Let me just turn all of these layers off and I can break everything down for you and show you everything it took for me to get this design completed. So let's start off with Adams himself. So I found this photo of Devante Adams that I wanted to use. Uh, here it is. So I have this photo of Devante Adams. I put a bevel and emboss on him because I wanted it to be as if it was a embossing on the card. So the emboss on him is actually an emboss up and it's only set to about six pixels or so and I played around with some screen and multiply settings until it looked how I wanted. I then also have a layer of gray on top of it set to screen just to give it sort of a slight highlight to make it look like it was glossy. Then I've got the background. So the background is just the initial image that I had of Devante Adams set to blur and then I have a gradient map of the Packers green on top of it. Now we get to the card portion of the design. So I've got a border that just goes all the way around it. I have a metal layer on top of that set to multiply or normal since it's a white rectangle it doesn't really matter. I have a gradient map that goes from black to gold to a lighter gold using the Packers colors. And then I have a gold layer on top of that set to lighter color. Um, it just looked how I wanted to at that set blending mode. So we've got the border. Now what we have is the patch. So if you know anything about trading cards, um, this is a quote unquote one of one design. So they normally have pretty unique patches. They'll either have a Nike logo or they'll have like a laundry tag or the NFL logo. So for this, I found a logo or a patch of the Green Bay 100th season. So I went ahead and put that masked to this layer. Now this is all grouped together. I use a bevel and emboss that I actually use on the border as well. But this bevel and emboss is not up, it's down because I want it to be in the card. So I have a set a slight bevel on that so it looks like it's inside the card instead of on top of the card. And then I have an inner glow set to multiply to show as if there was um, a shadow inside to make it look like it's even more inside the card. So that's the main aspect of the patch, but I have a golden patch around it. I have a border. So the border is the same as the border on the outside. I've got just a black layer. I have a metal layer that does nothing. I have a metal layer set to screen and then I have one on top of that set to multiply. Just played around with different blending modes until it looked how I wanted. Then I have a gradient map on top of that that's the same as the border and then the same gold texture that I had. So then that is the patch area. So with the patch I have text. So the text I have on here. I've got on here one of one at the bottom, I've got Devontae Adams, I've got Game Changers, which would be the hypothetical name of this card series. Um, I have the same bevel and emboss, that's an inward emboss or a down emboss on this text. And then I have the same um, layers on top of it that I do on the patch border. So I have metal, I have another metal set to overlay. I have the same gold texture set to overlay this time. And then I have another metal texture at the bottom to give more contrast. Then I have this whole group with a gradient map on top of it. The same gradient map that we used on the other border. So everything matches. So that's the text we've got on there. Um, next we've got the signature and the sticker. So. I've just got these two lines, these two gradients that are framing in where this sticker would hypothetically go. And then we've got the signature and sticker itself. So it starts off with this piece of holographic paper I found that I masked to a rectangle. So I have this set to 10% and I builded 
I build it. I built this slowly over time, um, layer by layer by layer. So I've got holographic paper here. I've got another level that is just the bevel at the top and at the bottom. So it looks like it's a sticker on top of it. And I have two more layers on top of that. One set to overlay at 50% and the other one set to screen at 10%. And you can see it's just building slowly this transparent holographic sticker on top of it. I then have watermarks on top of it with Bradley Jack design. So those are just my name slanted and then I have um, the holographic paper masked to that layer. And those are all set to overlay. And that just gives me this sort of holographic overlay. I have a highlight on this sticker signature. So if you look at an actual card, I, I didn't do this as well as I could have, but generally there'll be some highlight spots on the hologram on the sticker. So I just wanted to highlight parts of that. And then I've got the signature itself. So if I turn that on, um, I went ahead and took his signature, made it yellow. Um, go ahead and look at a different video I have on how to how I add signatures um, on my YouTube channel. It's a quick seven, eight minute video that shows how I put all signatures on my designs. Um, I had a bevel emboss on that, but it didn't look good, so I never used it. And then I have that same gold on top of it um, on the signature. Now, actually what I had on here, which isn't showing up because this is rasterized for some reason, is I actually used the same gold texture but then I went in and did a path blur and created a path that followed the signature. So it kind of looks like it's actually being signed. Instead of it just being flat, I was trying to give the illusion of sort of a stroke that would actually be made. Um, so I put a path blur on it, which is what's on there now, and then masked that to the overall layer. Then I have a, just a quick shine on top of the sticker to sort of solidify everything. So. This is just an overlaid gray gradient from top left to bottom right that I have masked to the same square. So that's the signature. Um, I have a logo sticker at the top, which is just my logo um, on sort of a holographic sticker. So I have an outline of my logo, like a border that I have the holographic paper masked to. I have my actual logo with the same holographic paper, but reversed. So you can see the details on it. And then just the logo again, set to color dodge at 50%. So you can really see the logo. And then I've got a little highlight on that as well. Just a little uh, gray gradient set to screen at 70%. Now what makes this card look like a card are these spots of gloss. So you can see here, I have this cardboard coated sort of texture that I have on here set to screen with a gradient map on top of it to give it the illusion of it's actually a piece of cardboard. If you look at a, a trading card, you'll have a shiny glossy top, but you still see the texture of the actual cardboard underneath it. So I've got a shine in the bottom right and I have one in the top left as well. And I have the t one in the top left, I have it above this border around the patch but below the actual patch graphic because the patch wouldn't be glossy just the um, border would and actually i should probably put this up here that looks better so i don't know why that wasn't there before now it's over the entire border so this is the card design pretty simple name patch signature some other flare on there so that's the, the graphic we have in the case. So what I'm gonna do is go to the next PSD file I have, which is the actual case that the cart is in. And this all started with this Tom Brady case. So I found this photo of a Tom Brady card, went ahead and duplicated it and erased most of the text up here. I changed some of the numbers to 10, zeroed out the serial number, and then on top of that, I added some text. So I just went in and added whatever text I wanted, said it's a 10 gem mint, which apparently is wrong, but whatever. I went ahead and blurred some of this text too to sort of match the uh, artifacting 
in the JPEG of the other text. But you know, I just put on here 2019 Bradley Jack Design Series, 100 Year One of One, number 17 Devontae Adams. It's a 10 out of 10, and it's Gem Mint, which is the highest grade you can get on a card. So I then lightened everything. So this is just a um, levels layer, and I moved over the white to lighten everything up so you can tell what the case looks like. Then I have the card design in here. So I just um, rotated it to match where the Tom Brady card was. And then I actually duplicated this bottom back layer of the Tom Brady card, made it black and white, and masked out everything except for this tiny border. So I wanted the, the highlighted border that was on the Tom Brady card to be on this card as well to make it more realistic. I then added, if I turn this layer off, you can see on the Tom Brady card, there's a highlight right here on top of the card and here at the bottom as well. So I wanted to go ahead and add those back in. So I just painted real light with a white brush on the tops here to make it look like it was in the case. And I have on here case lighting. So I then added where these highlights are on the card, there would hypothetically be a highlight on the case. So I went ahead and added, um, this is just a overlaid layer set to 30%. I just took a brush and brushed on lightly um, white at like 20% on um, where both the highlights were. And then I went ahead and just set up a, a, screen, a layer of levels set to screen, masked everything out and then painted back in some highlights on certain spots that I just wanted to highlight to show that it was actually in the case. So that's the case design once we had the card created. Then I took that and put it in this scene. So let me turn everything off here. So I started with just this wooden background and then the card case itself. So what I did was I put the case on here Here's the case. I could have been just put it on here, done, do a little masking on here. But I wanted it to be realistic because these cases are clear, so I wanted you to be able to see the wood behind it. So what I did was I duplicated this layer a couple times that are here and here. I masked out everything except for what I did not want to be transparent. And then I have two underlying versions. I have one set to screen at 100%, and then I have one set to normal. Um, but in both of these, I have edited the blending options. So on the screen layer, if I just double click on the layer, you can see I moved over blend if gray, if anything under this layer that is black going up to this color, medium gray is going to be transparent. So if you see, I can move these around and it's getting rid of more and more of the case. Now this case is just highlighting everything. So this is mainly the highlights of the case. The one below it is set to normal, but if I move this around, you can see more and more of the case is coming through. Now most of it is this black here. So if I move this over, let me move it all over. So you can see the case here. If I move this over, it gets rid of some of the case. And if I hold down the option key, I can move the right side of that tab over and it's getting rid of a lot of the case. Now, I wanted the shadows and highlights to both be there. So that's why I made this secondary um, layer underneath the highlights. I then just took this layer, made it gray and I blurred it and put it underneath. And that is our shadow for the layer for the case. Uh, now this isn't perfect. You can see up here there's some areas that there probably would be a highlight, but this is what I ended up with to make it realistic so you can see the wood beneath the case. So then I wanted to show how Green Bay Packers fans fingers are covered in cheese all the time because I'm a Bears fan, as you can see, because I'm wearing a Chicago Bears shirt. Weird to do a, a uh, Packers design unless they showed how grubby their fingers are full of cheese. So. I went ahead and threw some cheese on here. So I found a photo of cheese, masked out the cheese. I went ahead and threw a, a multiplied levels layer on top of it. 
and sort of painted around the edges to make it darker because it would be darker if the light source is coming from the top left, which is where I have the shadow. So everything's coming from the top left. So I went ahead and darkened up that side of the cheese. I then took that this layer, rasterized it, made it black and white and gray, and then set a motion blur to the cheese at this angle. And then you can see we've got a shadow that moves with the angle of the light source. So we've got some cheese on the side here. I did the exact same thing with single blocks of cheese to go on top of the case. So you can see I've got cheese, a levels layer to darken up the edges, and then a motion blurred layer at the angle I want to match the lighting. So then we've got some macaroni and cheese in the left. So that's just a bowl of macaroni and cheese that I uh, clipped to a circle. I just painted in sort of what the shadow would hypothetically look like. And I threw a little levels layer on it to darken it up a bit, just because I didn't like how bright it was. We've got some macaroni on the right. Same deal, just masked out some macaroni and cheese. Threw it on there with a the levels layer. Since this is below where the light source would be, we wouldn't see the shadow, so I didn't need to make a shadow. Then I got some craft singles. So the craft singles are cool because I did a similar thing that we did with the case. So I have three layers. I've got the top layer, which is the inside of the package with the cheese, everything that's gonna be opaque and not transparent. Then I have a layer below it where the blending options on it, I made it if it was white instead of black that it was going to be more transparent. So this whole area was white, but I wanted to make it look like it was a cheese package and you would be able to hypothetically see through it. So I played with the blending options. If this layer is white, whatever layer of white, it was going to be transparent. So I went ahead and did that. Then I have one below it, which I can't tell what it's doing. It must be doing something. Oh, you can barely see it. It's adding a little bit of white back to it. So we'll just turn both of those on. And I basically grouped those together and duplicated it a couple times, rotated it so it looked like a pile of craft singles, as you can see here. And then I went ahead and put a shadow underneath it over here so it looked like it was sitting on the table. Then we got some easy cheese. Same method pretty much. Got this easy cheese. Went ahead and masked it out so it was just the easy cheese. Um, drew some shadows on it to darken it up at the bottom. A levels layer set to multiply to do the same thing to darken it up at the bottom. And then I duplicated the cheese and had a cover color overlay set to it so there was a shadow on it. Um, and this I think I blurred as well. So we've got a shadow underneath the easy cheese. Then I just put a couple color lookups on it. You know, a little bit of lens dirt to give it some realism. Another color lookup, this one 2395 at 50%. And then another color lookup on top of it, Foggy Night set to 15%. So it just barely does anything to it. And then I threw a watermark down here at the bottom with my name and my logo. So that's how I was able to make this design. Um, I hope you guys got a lot out of this. Uh, this was fun to make. I'll probably make more of these. If you want to see me make uh, a design like this for someone on your team, let me know in the comments below who you would want me to make um, and for what team if I don't know who they are. And um, other than that, make sure to check out my other videos on my YouTube. Uh, like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at Bradley Jack Design. If you have any other suggestions for tutorials or breakdowns you want to see, let me know in the comments below. Thanks.